Bronies and Pegasus sisters, welcome to the Pony News Flash for the 4th of January 2013. My name is the Rainbow Brony, bringing you Pony News, reviews, highlights, and more. This show is going to be done in a Total Biscuit kind of style, and I hope you guys enjoy it. If you want to submit anything, you can do so by sending me a mail to rainbowbrony at derpymail.co.uk, commenting on these videos, sending me a personal message on YouTube, or sending me a message on Twitter at the Rainbow Brony. Everything can, of course, be found in the description and also at the end of the video. Coming up in the show. 2012, Year of the Pony, according to WTVI News 4. Bronies featured in recent episode of Hot in Cleveland. MLP comic issue number 2 hits the shelves. Season 3 finale confirmed a single parter. Hasbro integrates its TV film business with toy lines. And last but not least, YouTube Pony copyright issues. The people over at WTVY Donathan, Alabama, who have done reports about us before, have declared 2012 the Year of the Pony. In my personal opinion, the Year of the Pony is 2011, but 2012 has been the first year where this fandom has become well established with a whole lot of websites and, of course, conventions. They also made two videos looking back on the reports they have done, so we, of course, need to take a look at that. It is this time of the year for us to kind of look back and see some of the stories that we've covered. We've tried to pick some of our funniest, just in case you missed it, and some of the most unexpected. And one of those is the adult fans of the newest My Little Pony series, which shocks me, but it does. Here's a look back at a few of the stories that we covered about the Bronies. And the latest convention for My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, wasn't just a chance for fans to meet voice actors and discuss favorite episodes, but also a chance to help out a worthy cause. As part of a charity auction at Everfree Northwest in Seattle, nearly $14,000 was raised for the Seattle Children's Hospital's Greater Needs Fund. In one case, a fan auctioned off an autographed Derpy Hooves toy. The fan that purchased it then gave it back to the original seller as a gift. The next goal for the Bronies for Good group is to raise 100 liters of blood. Definitely doing good things. Yep. Just like the third time that we reported on the fans of that show doing something great for yeah, the they community. Yeah, seem to be uh, pretty good, good people there. We need to watch that show. It's the full season set of the first season of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Within a day, pre-orders of the Amazon exclusive propelled the DVD to the third best-selling DVD on Amazon for at least a day, even beating out such DVDs of The Hunger Games Ooh. for a while. I need to check out that show because I have not seen it. The Bronies for Good, a group of fans of all ages of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, is currently raising funds for a chicken farm for orphans in Africa. Now they teamed up with another charity for a live stream event over the weekend where fans contributed artwork like the ones that you see behind me. Now along with that money, more than $2,000 was raised from that event. And as you can see here, the progress from the Seeds of Kindness 2 fundraiser. The walls are already up on the farm. And this wasn't My Little Pony, although it was a rarity. Uh, runaway horse in Scottsdale, Arizona gave authorities the slip. There you go, wild and free in the desert. Did you think of that yourself? Because that was good. What? When you wrote the lines. No, actually, uh... This wasn't My Little Pony. That yeah, was really cute. Yeah, I, I, I actually can't take credit for that. Producer Sean writes the, uh... Good job, writes Sean. Writes the stories there. <laughs> I just, I'm just the robot that reads it. <laughs> and that was the first issue of the comic book adaptation of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Now, it was recently released and with an amazing 100,000 plus orders, required a second printing to satisfy the demand. Now, the comic is based on the cartoon, which has been a surprise hit with adult audiences along with young girls. Now, one reporter on Twitter said that fans waited at a comic shop for over an hour <coughs> for autographs from the writer. It's also been so successful that a spinoff book highlighting individual characters is now being planned by the company. There you go. Yeah, that is kind of cool. Hey, listen, before I came to the uh, morning show here, I hadn't heard of My Little Pony in a long, long, long time. And I certainly didn't realize that uh, adults were reading the thing. But I assume if you have kids, you got to keep up with SpongeBob and all those other folks, right? Yeah, I, didn't, uh, I, I, I remember My Little Pony from sure. years, years back. But sure. uh, I guess it's made a comeback now. <clears throat> Obviously so. A big, uh, Demetrius is a big fan of My Little Pony. 
Yo, what'd you say there? Demetria. Yes. <laughs> She's always got the comic, <clears throat> comic book and everything out there on the desk when you're not here. Oh, yeah. Uh, and well, they mailed me one. They, I think they mailed her yeah, one too last they week. They did. For uh, talking about That's it. That's what she said. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Hey, uh, let's see. Time wise, <clears throat> it is uh, coming up on 25 minutes after the hour. Sorry for the little. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I'm a little rusty too. You know, I've been off for a week, so I don't know. I don't know what we're doing here now. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to let you do whatever it is. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks, Connor. Hey, uh, speaking of My Little Pony, there you go. Caption this. That's yeah. the photo on the uh, Facebook page right now. WTVY News for this morning. Punch that in on a little search bar on Facebook if you can still figure it out. I know, I know that Facebook changes all the time there. So, uh, anyways, like Connor said, 5:24. That's this morning. And I must say, my Monday started off to a great start. Good. I went upstairs mm -hmm. on the news in the newsroom, right. and this was on my desk. <laughs> my little pony. <laughs> Friendship <laughs> is magic. Yes. Uh -huh. The distributors over there, I mean the publishers over there with My Little Pony, they mm -hmm. heard us talking about it. So they decided to send us the first printing of the comic book series. So okay. very, very cool. Okay. You think that'll be worth something one of these days? It may be. That's why I don't want to open it. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to collect things, for heaven's sakes, don't touch them or they lose value. Exactly. If you open them, they lose value. You're just supposed to buy these things and put them in a box somewhere, I guess, most things, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to let you borrow it because I know you want to read it. I'm not, I, won't, I won't open it there, but this is what it I, looks I was like. just kidding. On, on, the, on, the, on the back of uh, My Little Pony, there's an advertisement for Transformers. Yeah. Talk about two different uh, groups there. <laughs> anyway, there you go. I'm not going to open that either. Keep it away from Ben when Ben gets back. When he gets back, yeah. exactly, because I know he's going to want his paws all over this. There you so go. There you I go. keep it to myself. What else you got going on this morning? Have, you said you had a good weekend or not? I did. I had a really, good. really good weekend. I cooked for some of my friends, invited okay. them over, and um, they didn't die. So okay. <laughs> that's a good sign that my that cooking was okay. That is a good okay. sign. Good sign. <laughs> we do have some rain around the area this morning. and. Uh, I love videos like this because they give such a positive look on Bernie's. But now, going back to the article... The rather lengthy article looks back on how the Bernie community got started, and a lot more that I am not going to cover because it would simply take too much time. So, if you want to read the entire article, you can find that in the description where you can also find all the articles referenced in this video. The article covers about everything and can, to my surprise, be used to explain the Bernie community to a non-Bernie, which is a big surprise because most popular news coverage tends to be biased, sexist, stereotypical, and rather offensive. I feel like this article is a big step towards acceptance by the media. All they've covered in this article was positive and I can happily confirm true. Articles like this make my heart light up because I know we are changing the masculine stereotype. Let's hope we get more articles like this in 2013 and upcoming years. Bronies have been featured in a recent episode of Hot in Cleveland. The episode is called Cleveland Fantasy Con. And if anyone can find the full episode on YouTube, could you please send me the link? Because I would like to watch it and make a fair sound judgment of whether it's positive or not. Let's take a look, shall we? Hey, you look amazing. Help! Help! <laughs> stop! Stop! It's me! Sean? You said you were going as a prince. I am. Prince Silver Saddle. The strongest pony in all of Equestria. Equestria? Is that a Star Trek thing? <laughs> You're adorable. Equestria is the magical land of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. <laughs> Are you talking about the cartoon for little girls? It's for people of all ages. <laughs> Don't look so concerned. I'm just one of a whole community of guys who are devoted to My Little Pony. We're called bronies. I mean, we get together, we dress up, and we brony out. You're gonna love it. I don't know about that. That's just because it's new to you. Look, it's all positive. We celebrate My Little Pony's beautiful ethos of friendship, caring, learning to value people different than ourselves. If you're against all that, some of it. <laughs> Overpowered OC for the win. This video is mostly correct. For once, it seems like a show has actually done research on the Bernie community instead of brainlessly using a stereotype. The only thing that bothered me was him saying that Bernies meet up and dress up. 
That is not necessarily true, and with that I mean the dress up part. And it really makes it look like a bunch of guys that like to play dress up and watch a show for younger audiences. And brony out, I'm guessing that's a synonym for hanging out. I wonder where they got that from. I've never heard anyone say that before. Maybe I'm being overly critical right now, but whatever. The beginning was rather funny, and it puts a rather positive look on bronies. They could have done without the fursuit, but that would kind of ruin the entire thing. To really judge the entire thing, I would of course have to watch the entire episode to give a good sound judgment if it's positive or negative. I'm staying neutral at the moment. So my momentary judgment, pretty good trailer, with some great humor, with a little bit of stereotyping, but that's only done for the humor and should be not taken as offensive at all. One thing that I don't really like is the added laugh tracks. They work for some things, but in my opinion, it doesn't really work for this sort of thing. The MLP comic, which is written by Katie Cook, drawn by Andy Price, and colored by Heather Brickle, has finally hit the shelves. In this issue, the main six continue their quest towards the Changeling's Den to have a showdown with Queen Chrysalis, because she is in possession of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Now that is a very interesting storyline, and it seems like something you want to keep looking out for. A note about this issue is, it was released too early by Nook's online services, because they didn't know of the delay due to strikes at the publishing facilities, and released it back at its original publishing date. They of course removed these copies rather quickly from their website. You can digitally purchase these, the comic at iTunes, Comixology, and links to those are in the description, or if you want to pick up a physical copy, you can go to Larry's Comics and other shops across the nation. The My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Season 3 finale has been confirmed a single-parter. That's right, everypony, the finale of Season 3 is going to be a single-parter as confirmed by MLP writer Megan McCarthy on Twitter. She has also announced that Mitch Larson, aka M.A. Larson, is going to be its writer. And we know Larson from the Season 2 premiere, Sonic Rainboom, Luna Eclipsed, Swarm of the Century, the super speedy site is Squeezy 6000, that's a mouthful, It's About Time, Ponyville Confidential, and Magic Duel. Now these were all extremely good episodes, so I am not worried at all about the Season 3 finale. The writing team so far has, in my opinion, nailed pretty much all episodes, so they really know what they are doing. So don't worry about the Season 3 finale being bad, because with Larson writing it, I have a feeling that they will hit the nail on the head once again and can't even compete with the very popular Season 2 finale. Hasbro integrates TV film business with toy lines. In an article published by The Hollywood Reporter, there is stated that Hasbro is restructuring the way Hasbro Studios, in charge of its TV and film operations, reacts with the rest of the company, such as the toy business. Now, what does this mean for My Little Pony? Well, at this moment, we cannot tell. It could mean that we are going to get more show to toy or toy to show integration, more show accurate toys, and or higher quality products all around. This to me sounds rather good. Let's hope this will lead to some better show comparable toys, not some G2 looking brushables. Do note that I do own one of those, but it's really one of the only sets of MLP swag that is available to me here. And finally, a very concerning article popped up on Derpy Hoof's News and also Equestria Daily concerning YouTube copyright issues. In the past couple of days, there have been a wide range of videos being flagged for copyright content. Now, you will probably think, this is nothing new. We've had trolls flagging pony videos before and has resulted in channel removals like Alex's. But that was restored rather quickly. The worrying thing is that this is not troll related, but a side effect of Hasbro Studios LLC using tools that YouTube offers for copyright holders to make sure that this cannot be uploaded by any users without their permission. Now, how are they doing this and what are they using? Currently, they have started using YouTube's copy content ID system. If you want a full explanation, you can find a link in the description where there is also a two minute video explaining everything but I'll give you a run through of the basics. Copyright holders can submit video and audio to this automated system. This service runs 24-7 and scans the vast archives of YouTube looking for matching material. When this is found, it flags the video and files a claim. Unlike DMCA, the video remains in operation, but may not be viewable by certain regions of the world 
and most likely mobile devices. They have done this to take down full episodes from YouTube. This was first observed by a community HD ripper who encountered this when uploading the most recent episode. He figured that the intro was being tagged and fixed it this by removing the intro. This, on the other side, has a very unfortunate side effect as some derives works using stock footage ranging from Friendship is Witchcraft, the Mentally Abridged series, and also episode reviews are getting these content ID claims. The last point is of course very worrying because I am an episode reviewer and I do expect to get one of these claims a couple times. If I do get these claims, said episode will be removed from YouTube and I will contact Hasbro for permission to upload these episode reviews. If I receive a response stating that I am not permitted to use entire episodes, I will send a reply asking if I can at least use parts of the episodes that in no way represent the full episode for commentary and criticism purposes. If I get a response again stating that I am not permitted to even do that, I will remove every episode review from YouTube. The last thing I want is a problem with the legal staff of Hasbro. The people over at Derpy Hopes News have spoken to a friend with close ties to Hasbro Legal, and he said, Hasbro has no issues with Derived works on YouTube, and actually enjoys them as it brings the company free advertisement about the show, and more so the products slash toys that they sell. So the derived works on YouTube, like Friendship is Witchcraft, are not infringing copyright. We do get a reason for Hasbro to take these measurements. Hasbro recently attempted to sell the show to CCTV, which is the main television station in China, who started questioning why they should buy the show when it's watchable on YouTube, giving a very good reason for recent actions on YouTube. So having said all of this, when you have your video flagged by the content ID system, submit a dispute claim. In general, when you submit a dispute, the video will become available to the general public again, until the claim is cleared up. Now, if the information from Hasbro Legal is correct and you are not hosting a full episode, the flag will be removed and your video is allowed to stay. I would also think that your video will be also added to some sort of database or whitelist to not get flagged in the future. I must thank Hasbro Legal for actually giving us information on this subject instead of leaving us in the dark not knowing what's good or bad. I will keep an eye out on this and keep you guys updated. Alright, this next part of the show is called Community Spotlight, where I'll be spotlighting community art, music, videos, games, Tumblr accounts, DeviantArt accounts, and all sorts of other cool things. If you want to submit anything, you can do so by sending an email to rainbowbrony at derpymail.co.uk, commenting on these videos, sending me a peer personal message on YouTube, or tweeting me about it. Everything is down in the description and at the end of the video. First spotlight is going to be music, and this week it's Mando Pony's Stick Around, a very sweet song about Applejack and Spike in the episode Spike at Your Service. This song really touched my heart, but how much it looks like the song ships Applejack with Spike, it really doesn't. It just tells about their now very strong friendship. Let's listen to a small sample. Taking my time Thinking it over, wondering how I can repay Saving my life, how can I show her all my gratitude? What would Twilight say? And every time I think of leaving her I feel like I am letting her down So I guess I'll stick around her Next in the spotlight is a YouTuber called BioClutch, a link to his channel is down in the description. He makes music and also does some gameplay. Most of his music is rather fast. Let's listen to a small sample. Personally not a big fan of this music genre, but if you enjoy it, make sure to go check him out. Up next is a piece of art made by My Little Pinky Dash called Colorless Rainbow. This is probably one of the most touching pieces of art I have ever seen. The amount of detail and realism put into this picture is just amazing. It brings up two feelings, sadness and curiosity. Sadness because Rainbow Dash is losing her color, which is really her trademark, and curiosity because 
I wonder why are there why are her colors dripping off? It really reminds me of Return of Harmony where Twilight turned gray. It really gave me the same feelings. For the third spotlight, we have a Tumblr called Ask Danger Dash, which is a recently made Tumblr created by a guy called Dejade. I do believe that's how you pronounce that, who is into a lot of stuff. We know him as an animator for Double Rain Boom, as a vector artist for Silly Philly Studios responsible for animations like Daylight's End, and he is also the dialogue vector artist a uh, dialogue character vector artist for My Little Investigations. This guy is probably so freaking busy that I don't even know how he's able to do all of this stuff. His ass Tumblr doesn't have much on it yet, but the story has a lot of potential and I'll definitely be following what's going to happen next. Definitely also check his DeviantArt, which you can find on his ass Tumblr and also in the description. Second last spotlight is a Kickstarter project. Now, a little while ago, a Kickstarter project was made for a coin to be created based on stained glass pony art created by Achille Amethyst. That one was rather successful, and now another one from her has popped up. This one includes a Twilight coin and also a Faustacorn coin surrounded by some characters. If you want to get these, the prices are on the Kickstarter page. And make sure to be quick because as of the 4th of January, there's exactly three weeks left. This means it ends on the 25th of January. If you are a collector of awesome fan made pony swag, make sure to support this project. For the last spotlight of today, we have I Can See Ponies in Real Life, a video made by Sawyer Films. A very li funny little video about a guy who saw ponies when he was on acid, and now he sees them without being acid. on acid. It's complicated. Let's take a look. I just don't know what went wrong! Do you still see ponies anymore? No! I don't see ponies anymore! I don't see ponies anymore! Yeah! Thanks, Doc! Yeah, we're in a season! Most of the morning cereal. Not really much to say about it, it's really just a lot of silliness. Link of course can be found down in the description.
This part of the show is called the comments section, where we'll be taking a look at comments posted on previous Pony News Flash videos. Since I don't have any as of yet, I can't really do stuff here. So that is really a thing for future episodes. But don't worry, we'll have something here. And this is the last segment of the show as of now, the random box where there will be something different every episode. This episode, it's a video. I know this one is pretty old, but still, it's funny. In a way. This video is titled, Anthony Bourdain, I believe that's how you pronounce it, eats Rainbow Dash. My reaction when I first saw the title was, what in Celestia's beard is this? When I watched the video, I understood and laughed. So, let's take a look. Suntari insists we try some horse meat. Or is it pony? Ah, thank you. Yeah, that looks good. Cu cured. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rainbow Dash, look at you now. My little pony. <laughs> Alright, that is it for this episode of Pony News Flash. If you want to check out anything referenced in this video, you can do so by looking in the description. If you want to submit anything ranging from news to fan-made content, or do you want to suggest another segment, do so by sending an email to rainbowbrony at derpymill.co.uk, commenting on any Pony News Flash video, sending me a personal message on YouTube, and of course you can tweet me at the Rainbow Brony. All of that information is on the screen right now. Make sure to like, favorite, comment, and subscribe if you want to know when I'm uploading stuff. Also, make sure to click that share button so we can get this series off to a good start. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. I love your pony. I uh, hope you guys are in gonna enjoy this new series. Uh, now, I quickly want to talk about um, how much I've been dedicating myself to this, because I've been working on the new screen and that stuff for about four hours. And that was partially because of technical issues with Photoshop. And writing the script took about four hours. And currently counts 2,817 words. And all the voicing and editing took me about five to six hours. So I've put a, like 14, 16 hours of time into this, you know. And I hope you guys can really appreciate me trying to inform you guys of all the latest pony related news. And getting some of the community content out there. Hope you guys enjoyed.